I did a film with Liam Neeson, my first start acting. This is what started it. And I was doing the take, and I was doing it the same every way. I didn't know, switch it up, right? So the director, he comes up to me and he goes, uh, Damson, uh, you are doing it the same every time. When an actor does the take the same every time, uh, this makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> season six the first one in Toronto 2018 yeah it actually does feel like a long time ago here's to season six let's make some more unforgettable moments only in the shop cheers cheers have you got in the studio with some of the artists from the UK yet yes, with, from the UK no I ain't got in the studio with nobody in the UK and I hit the UK quick you know what I mean? Like, they gravitate towards, like, hip-hop, you know what I mean? Faster than, For sure. than anybody. What'd you do when you went over to the UK? I, I was on press run, and then it was during the festival season, so, you know, they had, like, wireless and what okay. is it, rating and leads, like, not yeah. too far off, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I was just vibing, bro. It's just a, you know, it's a vibe. Was you, know you nervous I mean? to go over Running around talking like y'all, that's what I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I came back with my <laughs> accent on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. But I love going to new places, you know what I mean? That's, like, one of my favorite things about this. Out of everywhere you've performed, what, what, like, where would you say the best energy is? Outside of the States. Like, you most say unexpected. London. You just got back unexpected. from Hong Kong, but... Oh, when well, that was crazy, too, yeah. by the way. Like, it's kind of hard for me to... After just coming back from Hong Kong, like... What was that like? Oh, ridiculous, bro. Ridiculous. It had to be upwards of, like, I don't know how many people was in that arena, you know what I mean? And I headlined it. You know what I mean? I was, I was the only hip-hop artist there, and they really know these songs, you know what I mean? They're singing the songs? Know. Absolutely. Wow. Word for word. Wow. You on a stage looking at all of those people, mm -hmm. that exhilarating feeling. For sure. I'll never feel that. It's like no. I remember seeing Braun run out to sicko mode with... Drake and Drake. Drake, right? Yeah. And he's, he's like... He's jumping nah, for sure. For it's sure. A, it, by the way, that feeling is literally a drug because when, it's you, me. when it happens, your brain releases no, absolutely. dopamine. Absolutely. And you probably feel yourself get it's all high. about right? how you respond to that, to the release to the, to of the release. it. You know what I mean? It's me, literally it a drug. Me up. I, I'll, never get, I'll never be able to feel you that. Want maybe it. in the theater, maybe. Absolutely not. Maybe. Absolutely not. When you say LeBron went out on stage and they went crazy. Oh, well, I was you, calling all my rapper friends. I was like, yo, can I, can I come, can I come run on the stage with you? You, had, you ever see me performing somewhere, you in the neighborhood, how let me. You know, okay. I, 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 yeah. I will tell you, you said you've never felt that feeling. We have someone here who has felt that feeling. It was Caitlin here, right? Delivered a 10 out of 10. Perfect 10. But by the way, you're rehearsed, though, so it's a little different. You can't change. You know exactly what you're going to do when you walk out there. But I do rehearse for the moments where I don't. Right, no, right. like what's gonna happen. Be prepared like, if, you know, you gotta be able to adapt. You know what I mean? I was still working on that routine like the day that I went on the floor. So I'm like, okay, worst case scenario is like I just start free, free flowing and <laughs> going. Wow, really? <laughs> and can you see the crowd when you're tumbling, flipping? 100%. Moving? Whoa, and they're and there. that's something like I haven't been able to recreate that feeling ever since. It is a drug, right? So like I'm there and I love feeling the energy's. Crowd, like the crowd's energy. And so it kind of gives me life for sure. And that's how, like the routine that went viral, I could feel everyone zoned in. Not a single other person was going during the meet and everyone was just like pff, captivated. And I, when it was silent, it was silent. And when it was loud, it was loud. And you heard it during the routine? During the routine, yeah. It's also interesting because the baby I'd imagine for you, you feed off that energy and you're I, giving yeah, it back. I love it. If, Have you ever been at a show and you know this ain't going right, right? We had Jada, Jada Kiss, on the show one time, and we asked him if he's ever bombed at a show, whether it's him or it's just not connecting. Yeah. He goes, yeah, he goes, I look at my DJ, he goes, just run the records and let's oh, get out of here. We all didn't have that. We all didn't have that. We all didn't have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if, if we're going to compare it to sports, we all didn't have a bad game. Of course, you go have some. You get what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like, you're traveling to different markets. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're fans of different people. Yeah. Like, I've never, like, felt entitled to the audience receiving me perform my performance a, a certain way. You know what I mean? Like, wow. that's not even how I approach it. You know, that's what 
more of a rehearsed performance would be because you know you expecting this, but it's also you know it's good to rehearse. But for like artists like me who just prefer to connect with the fans, of course I know the songs that I'm gonna do. But a lot of times, like I do this often, like I'll, I'll make adjustments right there on the wow. spot. I'll come look at what the crowd looks like. Oh, see the. You know what I mean? Okay, boom. I look at. Let me look at the aesthetic in here. Let me see what's going on. You I like having to prove yourself. Yeah, you know? add this song, add this song. Like I'll know. And same question to you. Do you can you feel it early? Like, oh, I f this one up, but I gotta finish the routine. Y yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Actually, I just posted something on TikTok. You know the trend that's like dumb ways to die. Yeah. And one of mine was like, my foot comes off the end of the beam, and I am doing a double back, and I'm just like in the air, like. All right, here we go. And everything moves in slow motion. It's so crazy because everything's always fast and it's just like this. And you know it's bad. And you're like, okay, anything, yeah, yep. And I landed right on my head. I fractured my sternum. Oh, wow. And someone was like, commented like, why'd you keep going? Like, you all know when you messed up, why would you keep going? Like, imagine if you have the momentum and the power for a double and you mess up, if you stop, oh, you're done. You, you gotta hey, go. You could do anything. You gotta so I was go. Like, you just have to go for it. I couldn't even do a roly poly. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on my cartwheel, you know what I mean? So, so I can I'll get it one day. You know one I mean? day. I like show. the round off. I'm still trying to get that round off. <laughs> yeah, cartwheel one. to the round off. That's the one. That's I do want to ask her when you landed the 10, did you know it was a 10? You never really know when it's a 10 or not because our sport's so subjective. Cool. So it's like, okay, it could have been a 10, but one judge could just be having a but day. You, you know if you nailed it and you, like, in they may head. give me a nine, like, they may the give me eight, but you know right. you, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, I knew I did good. Um, yeah. yeah, so when it flashed, I mean, also, not to say anything, but like, it was probably my fourth 10 of this, like my career, so, so I was kind of- it's okay. like flex. It's the shop, yeah. A total now. No. Yeah, it's the shop, yeah, there you go. Like the flex. So it was like, uh, it wasn't the most exciting thing, but it felt good because that was my first time competing, like my split double lay, and being on podium's always a little bit funner because it's like you have the bounce of the floor, and it was four people instead of two. It's typically just two teams against each other, but there were more teams, more crowd. It's fun. It was a good meet. Do you know when you're doing acts, I mean, takes, like, before the director even says, like, that's the one, like, that works, that's the take? Or you always listen to the director, like, do it again, do it again? I always think I'm the worst actor in the world. No matter what. Like, yeah. It's actually, I have a bad habit, so I developed this thing on sets where someone on the set and the crew, I don't care who it is, Crafty, the grips, the director, someone has to tell me, yo, you killed it. Really? Quietly, for me to be able to sleep at night. Wow. Mm. That's, because even, it's, well, it's, it's insecurity, it's right? Totally. It's insecurity, and and they say let it go, but if if I know that I didn't hit it the way I wanted to, it's a feeling. I don't really rehearse or anything like that. I work off the actor. But do you have times where, like, you f you, you might have that feeling, like, I, mm. I, I did that, right? Mm. And then you watch the show, and you're like, that's not the one. The editor I, killed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, fire, that guy. fire that guy. <laughs> no, I'll give you an example. On the show, I never forget. I had landed this part, right? And um, so excited. I'm like, man, I'm about to work with one of the goats, right? And then Snowfall, like, oh, you ain't doing that film because it's COVID and mm. it can't, it clashes, oh. right? Mm. So I was mad. So the next day, I got to shoot the scene where I'm screaming at Louis and Jerome in the ball with so the cane. So you're really you mad. Know, so I'm coming in, I'm like, nobody talk to me. <laughs> you know? And boom, the whole crew, they were like, ooh, damn. <laughs> and you talk about that high, mm -hmm. chasing that all the time. Not for sure. You know, for brick sure. by brick or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm chasing that feeling with whatever character I'm playing. And that, I mean, it's, you'll be chasing it forever. No, for sure. So now I'm just at a place where I'm just, I'm learning to just let go. Just do it, go home, call my mom, come back to life, get out of the character's head. Do you use that insecurity as like, is that what helps motivate you and push you? Because insecurity is very dangerous. We all have it, right? Mm -hmm. It's how you manage it and how you mm. let it come and go. So you have to, but you have to either channel it or control it somehow, some way. How do you use it? I can't. I did a film with Liam Neeson when I first started acting. This is what started it. And I was doing the take, and I was doing it the same every way. I didn't know 
switch it up, right? So the director, he comes up to me and he goes, uh, Damson, uh, you are doing it the same every time. When an actor does the take the same every time, uh, this makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then walks away. And then when we wrapped it, when we finished the movie, like, he goes, so, did you have fun? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my career's old. <laughs> no, you tortured me. The whole so been torture. Right? So that, that trauma always stays with you. I and get it. I you get know, it. they say it doesn't matter how big you get, you're always trying to prove yourself. You're always trying to train, you're always trying to get better. I find now I kind of need to audition to not only prove to everyone that I could do the job, but prove to myself that I could do the job. But as you get bigger, I'm in this place now where people are like, yo, come do this. Automatic. You know? Mm -hmm. So the nerves are there, I'm walking on, people are like, yo, Damson Idris is in this. I walk on set first day, I'm like. <laughs> so I'm blown, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm blown away to hear this, right? It's like, I hear you, an accomplished actor, successful, massive hit show, you, perfect tens, z -z, plural. You sold out shows, just came back from, you know, doing the festival thing. I'm interested you as an artist, do you still feel, even with all your success, you're trying to prove yourself? Is all that still a thing? All the time. I think, you know, especially now, like, black is is the new black in the art world, right? Like, they, they, they just figured out that we were dope. And, you know, it was a while where... I wish they would have waited a little longer so I could buy some more Price Price the window. It's definitely up. But, you know, there was a while where, like, I was able to occupy a space sort of t to my, myself, right? And... Now, it's really real, right? It's like the, the, the new league of folks that are coming in where it's like, I really have to be hypercritical about everything I do, right? And, and, and what I'm saying. And, and to just make sure, like, you know, there's a lot of artists that make art for art's sake. They just make, right? Like, I'm gonna make a pretty picture. It has no substance behind it. And for me, it's important that no matter what I do, it says something, right? Because it has to, you know, has to hit here. Like, and so, yeah, it's always that thing of like me trying to outdo my last, you know? Um, but I don't get the feeling of like, there is no audience until it's a show. Like the instant right? gratification. Right? There's yeah. no instant gratification, yeah. you know? You don't like, finish, walk back and be like, I did that. No, you know, it's, it's actually the opposite. It's like, I fed that up. Damn, wow. wow. That sucks, right? Or like, I, I need to do better. This is why, again, like you come to my studio, there's 27 paintings and I only needed to do two. Right, like, because it just comes from that place of like obsessiveness and overworking, and like, you know what? I'm, I'm trying. Can I to get the other myself. 25? Or? Absolutely, <laughs> come, come through. I, <laughs> art kind of happened accidentally. I was always creative. I was always the dude that was tasked with making, and like, you know, it wasn't until me doing the sh like being scared to kind of, you know, at the time, man, you can't pronounce yourself as a creative, as a visual artist from a black community in a lot of ways because you're looked down upon and there's words thrown at you, right? It's like, it wasn't as socially accepted as it is now. And so for me, it was like a thing that I always hid. And it wasn't until like, like DJ Drama was my homie. And you know, we went to school together and Drama would sell his mixtapes on the promenade while I'm selling t-shirts that I've hand painted and stuff like that. And Drama was like the first person, you know, that I knew within my circle that actually started making a little coin and bought the first painting I ever made. Did you consider yourself an artist or define yourself as an artist up to that point? I, I, no, no, because I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that meant yet, you know what I mean? Like I had, I had an understanding of a history of art, but it, it was very small. It was like, you know, that pinhole view. I grew up in Chicago, so seeing the Kerry Jameses, right? The, the, the Nick Caves and all of those guys start to rise up at a point. I didn't, that, that was my only view into black art in that way. Other than that, it was like the that you get right off the interstate where dudes are selling like, you know, uh, the Kappa and, you know, the artwork where the black man's holding up the black woman and it's strong, right? That was, that, that was, that's, I right, see exactly. that image in my head. Oh, right. right. Yes. That was, that's all, th those two versions were all I really knew other than like, again, the Basquiat, the Picasso. And so, yeah, it wasn't, I, I didn't think I could make it as an artist. It was just like, I was making shirts, you know, I was doing the things that were like a cultural norm. I was selling to a lot of the rappers or their stylists were coming to me, hey, such and such needs a, a shirt or a hat for the shoot for the source or the vibe or blah, blah, blah. So I was doing those things right then and there, but there was never in my mind a way forward for real, for real, as somebody that was gonna be able to go around the world with this.
Bro, what was that for you, baby? What was the moment? What was the... What, I, the first thing I know of, it was Suge. When I heard Suge, I was no, like... I, mean, I don't Suge. know who the... Hard. The moment for me, man... Like, when you heard Suge in the studio, did you know it was a one, or did you... Yeah, I knew When you played it for somebody? It's, it's interesting that you bring up Suge. Because, that, okay, so that, that goes to... This one, I knew it was my moment, because this is what, what even inspired me to make sure I got to take the shades off of this one. As a matter of fact, let me switch these. Oh, no. Oh, oh, wait, 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 it's not coming yet. This corporate world. This one, I, you know, found this out. I found this out in this moment. You know what I mean? So it took about 30 days or whatever. After I inked the deal in, I started working on the first project, which ended up being Baby on Baby, where I got the, the L.A. hat on, the, the, the pose they made me do for a year straight, 2019. Everywhere I go, they're like, do this. That was, that was your Wakanda <laughs> I mean, forever. I kids. Like, two years old. The baby. I'm like, no, don't, don't, don't do that. But, but yeah, so I got a text message either from a lawyer or a manager at the time saying that the money should be in the account. The, the, the check uh, should have cleared. <laughs> I make my driver. We on the way. I saw a Bank of America ATM. I had a Bank of America account at the time. I tell him pull over. I, I go in and I just hit check balance. And then I see it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> You know, it lets you print it or just whatever. I hit print. Now, I don't take this with me. <laughs> I printed it. I printed it, right? I see the balance on there, but I print it. I go hop back in the truck. Okay, I'm like, come on, let's go to the studio. We go. I shine my phone light on the phone. And I see the, you know, and the initial deal was only six figures. Like, I ended up, you know. This is your advance. I, exactly. Yeah. I ended up maybe, I don't know, maybe four months after I was getting that per show. Of course. What of I ended course, up getting yeah. right there. You know what I mean? I was blessed enough to have it, have it work out that way. But um, I checked the account balance, right? So we go in. I have uh, my guy Jetson, who, who produced the song, Shook. He met us at the studio, and this is the first song that I do that day. If you check out, you know, the words to the hook of the song is, uh, I just signed a deal, I'm on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's yeah, what that we was all my mood. Well, yeah, I'm I'm always up now. On. Yeah, yeah, now I'm in there. Almost give me a chill thing. It's I'm just up, to you know what I'm saying? That feeling we all in the song. That's what it was. I just popped my <laughs> for two minutes and however many seconds that song is. I literally was just, you know, when I say, uh, don't make me go hit the bank and check uh, and uh, take out a hundred to show you my pockets was different. The day before, I couldn't have went to the bank and <laughs> took out a hundred. The second I could talk to it, I talked it. You know what I mean? But uh, when I look at, you know, what I was blessed enough to be able to accomplish within the year of 2019 alone, you know you what I mean? Like, year. absolutely. Like, these things as an artist, as a rapper, are like, you know, this people will give yeah. their give their hand this, to give yeah, these this, things. This like, yeah, this all-American status. Cover all Billboard, yeah. cover of Double XL, uh, SNL. I did all that. Jimmy Fallon two, three times. Like, I didn't even, I wasn't even familiar with how large SNL was. Like, Were you was it my, too new to you to even appreciate the magnitude of it? Was anybody going like, dog, you doing SNL? My, that's, that's exactly SNL what I was getting ready to say. Huge, so this is, this <laughs> yes. is my brother. He's, he's really more of a brother than anything, but he's the director of a lot of my videos, uh, James Rico from The Real Ghost. He's like, bro, this is SNL. Like, I don't think you understand. Bro, that's I'm like, millions, it's he millions, said, bro. Much. He, he like, he like, the only rapper that is, he, I don't even think a rapper has ever even been on SNL. Like, not to mention like a rapper of like, you know what I mean? Like my stature, Nobody. he looked it up on the spot. He said, Kanye, Snoop Dogg. Kanye, Snoop. Snoop and Kanye. Snoop had the biggest moment ever. Remember Snoop wore the Tommy Hilfiger. Mm -hmm. I was a kid, I remember that as a kid. And, but not- That's it. Not like you were in year one. You were, no rapper has hit SNL like without Five, six albums. You get what I'm, this, yeah. is my, this is my rookie year yeah. in the game. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even have a, I had one album out. They counted as an album, the initial project I dropped. That wasn't even an album. Then I dropped the follow up uh, project, Kirk. You know what I mean? Later on that year, that was dedicated to my father. I think I didn't, I wasn't able to, you know, appreciate, you know, like my accomplishments and my blessings early on just because the amount of like real life that I was going through at the same time. As an actor, is it hard to not take what you're dealing with personally to work to the set? Like you gotta, cause you're playing a character, right? Mm -hmm. But just you're a human who's going through. Is it sometimes hard to separate the two? It's damn near impossible. For me, yeah. yeah. But that's just my process. Like I, I whatever's happening in my life, if it could service the day, channel it. I br I bring it in. It's like I bring that energy in. And as long as it's not affecting anyone and it's not ruining anyone else's day, mm -hmm. I could use it. You know, but 
sometimes you do need to know for sure come out of that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and you it's and, easy. By the way, the show Snowfall, which is fantastic, is a show about a very specific time and actually a place. But it, the time is what we all know as Americans, the crack epidemic. Mm. Well, I lived through it, right? My dad sold crack and went to, to the feds for it. And I know it very well. It was bad, but there was all these other things that happened around it that the show portrays. But you didn't grow up here. How did you know? How did you tap into that? Did you know about it before he you came here? Uh-huh. <laughs> he invented it. He invented it. He even brought it to LA. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm from Peckham. Of course. Right? So anyone around the world who knows about Peckham knows what it is. And there's a lot of themes that correlate with the show. Single fathers, police brutality, racism, drugs, violence. It's right outside my house. So I was able to connect in that way. And then I got family. You know, so it's it's a different. I, I I was an anomaly. I was I was a unicorn in that sense. Where it is a transformation. If you talk about accents and you know, I'm not like a guy from LA. You know, so I have to dig into that essence. Yeah, that's my point. How did you get yeah. into that part of it? It's Singleton, man. It's Singleton. It's movies. You, you know, he's uh, D said earlier. It's like in the UK, we really are about that life when it comes to the American culture. Like, yeah, I was learning about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King in school. I wasn't learning about the guy in the UK that was the politician. Like, I knew about that stuff when I was growing up. I said the other day I was watching Def Jam comedy when I was seven years old. You know, my favorite movie was Bad Boys when I was five. Like, it's, it's, we grow up climatized to the culture, American culture, African culture, and UK culture. So I was able to connect in that way. But when I'm really here, you know, like I told you earlier, I've been in the States since 2015. You know, I was 23 years old. 31 now, you live the majority of your adult life in the U.S. You're going to climatize to the seams that are here. I was on Skid Row marching during Floyd, you know, and then I'm running back to London marching in Hyde Park. So it's... All of that stuff feeds the character. It feeds the themes of the show. Do you think it's got the critical acclaim it deserves? A, and B, are you a little pissed now it's the final season and you didn't get that? that, that the show didn't. I ain't pissed, man. I'm going to be doing this till I'm 100 years old, you know? And and the accolades don't mean anything, man. When a, When someone hits me on social media and says, hey, I've just lost my father and thank you, for giving us 60 hours on the couch, you know, watching you perform. A lot of my memories with my dad, you, you were performing in them. That's the accolade for me. When, I'm, when guys from, from jail are like, yo, anyone switches the channel when Snowfall's right. on, it's a riot. It's going down, right? We're <laughs> you know? this down. That's the accolade. And the impact, man. It's true, like, it's the people, it's the connection with the people. And mm -hmm. when I walk on the street or, some article came out today, Damps and Idris is your favorite celebrity's favorite celebrity. <laughs> it's, it's like, it, you know, I'm getting love from the goats, you know. Before I, when, when I used to go to the club and they were like, yo, line up and give us $50. Right. The day before, I was skating with Beyonce. Right. You know, so those that know, know. And I was looking at Wood Harris, I'm obviously good friends with Idris, and you know, the wire didn't receive any love. No, yeah. You know, it's the writer show, though, you're right. You know, it's, it, it, these things happen, but in 100 years, you know, who are they gonna be talking about? Are they gonna be talking about Frank and Saint, I promise you. For sure. What was your moment? You know my moment. You were there oh, for that, my moment. That, that moment? was probably the biggest moment. Well, the co-creator of this show delivered his moment. That's a fact. Yeah. One day in Miami, what the, was it? Why were you? Was it Bowser? So hold on. I, 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 I get it. You just, Randy just brought you just to the house. Up. But that morning, we had we had brunch. and So how long ago was this? this was, yeah, we need was context. Bra Brown was playing in, Brown was playing in right Miami. 2013. Yeah. Wow, so tell I'll you. tell my side of the story. Okay. You tell his right, side right. of the story. 2013, me and Randy, who co-created this show with him, are having lunch with Jay-Z. We're having lunch. Jay was in town. I don't know what, I don't know why he was in town. Whatever, it's Miami. Everybody goes to Miami. But it was it was the end of Basel, too. It was the end of yeah. Basel. That's what it was. We were, mm -hmm. He was in town for Basel. Mm -hmm. He had rented a crib. 
So we're having lunch in the back, in the, on the patio. And Randy says, yo, I got this, I know this new kid who's a dope artist. He's going to come by and gift you a painting, Jay. I, I, he's like, Randy's like, I'm going to give it to you as a gift. The only thing I ask, can the artist come by and meet you? And Jay was like, cool, tell him to come through. And he came through. I had no idea who he was. I was... I had just started collecting art, small collection, and then Randy brought him through. It was a gigantic painting. It's huge. And he had it, he had the painting. <laughs> we unrolled it, we looked at it, we were like, damn, that's dope. Jay was like, appreciate it. I think you stuck around, we finished lunch. And that was that's my point of view of the story. What, I think it's in Jay's office right now. Mm -hmm. What did that moment mean to you? I mean, it was everything. Like the 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 other version, you know, it's three sides, right? At brunch, Randy knew how much of a Jay-Z fan I was. And Jay at the time, again, was, you know, buying work. And one of his dealers, I, I knew, right, just being a part of the art world. And so Randy was like, man, your boy's in town. And I'm like, man, I, joking, I'm tell him to buy a painting, <laughs> right? Like, tell him to buy a painting, let's go. And I had this huge painting at, at, at the fair. And so he texted him, he was like, Jay hit back and was like, cool, what is it? And then I was, you know, then I got nervous, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, seriously? Right, right. Right. Oh, he responded? <laughs> okay. And so we sent them an image. They was like, dope. Like, run it. And so I'm like, and so now I got to figure out, it's the last day of Basel, I got to figure out how to get this painting from the fair to Jay's Before crib. Before it sells. But, and it then might have, also, it might have sold. also, I got to leave. It's Sunday night. I got to leave that night. The next day, my sister has scoliosis surgery. I'm, I'm her guardian, right? So I'm on a clock. I had no idea about all that. At the Basel, Last day, there's no trucks in Miami to rent. Everybody's rented them. To, so to get the oh, yeah. these dudes, they're they're you know just it's Miami life. We chilling, we going to parties. I'm nervous. I'm like, help me, like <laughs> I gotta get this painting. So I end up just saying, I go to the fair, I take the painting off the wall. The you, gallery, you looking, yourself, me myself. The gallery is <laughs> looking at me. The gallery is like, yo, what the are you doing, man? And I, I'm like, yo, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then security comes. I'm, they think it's performance art. Everybody's confused. I'm popping it's staples. Is I'm popping staples out of the back of the <laughs> painting. And everybody, and the security's looking at the gallery. It's like, yo, should I arrest this? I'm like, what's happening? I roll it up. I put it on my back. Randy picks me up. Randy's in cut a... Cut to me and Jay chilling, drinking chilling. Yeah, mimosas and stuff. Right. Yeah. Mimosas and like... Yo, what time's this kid gonna get here? <laughs> Randy pulls up in a two-seater Benz. The painting is huge. Huge. Bro. I have to stick it out. It's hanging out it's the, 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 the little back, the little triangle window, yeah, right? Of <laughs> we drive it over there. I'm nervous as hell. First person kind of I see you in the house. It's hanging out. It's, it's a baby mama Benz. Okay, okay, but still. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's Where, hilarious. The, the painting is longer the than the car. Beard. Yes, it's huge. <laughs> the painting is longer had than the first good night. <laughs> <laughs> first person I see in the house is B, and she's in the kitchen just chilling, eating a salad. That threw you off. Bruh, of course. come on. <laughs> come on. So now I'm, I'm tightening up. I'm chilling. We didn't know each other, but I knew of, the, you know, obviously, the, you know, the whole squad. The only person I had met was Randy and Rich at the time. So we get out there, again, it's Jay. Jay, Jay don't have no shoes on. Jay's he's, chilling, he's at home. lounging, he's super right comfortable. Home. We're at the pool, we're sitting yep, at the pool. Yep. Yeah. And so he's like, you know, we talk for a minute and I kind of tell him the inspiration behind the piece. And he's like, yo, that is dope. He's you like, unrolled it. Yeah, and I- And the only thing I'm thinking of, I'm like, it's a dope piece. But how is he gonna roll that back up by himself? <laughs> right. I was just like, by himself. I mean, I'm not helping him. <laughs> not, not my problem. <laughs> I mean, can I get another mimosa? This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> but Jay was like, you know, it was dope. And yeah, so yeah. I think it was he was having a dinner at Soho that night. Something. Yeah. yeah and then he invited me, and I couldn't go. Whoa. Like, because I had to. I literally had to be back for the surgery. And you know, after that moment happened. That next day, I'm sitting in the in the waiting room, waiting for my sister to come out, make, making sure she was all good. And every like news article, you know, how did they hitting, find out? Dude, I have no idea. I, I posted a picture just of me, Jay. Yeah, you asked him for a picture. He was like, yeah. sure, no problem. Yeah. He was like, don't, don't don't take a picture of my feet though. That was, <laughs> that was his only thing. But I just posted a pic, and then with the art piece too. No, 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 no. It was just us, just, just them, chilling man. at the house. And I don't, I don't. But when I got on the plane, I'm running for the plane. When I get on a plane, I guess the dealer has said, so I don't know, I, I really don't know, because I hadn't even had time to even process what just happened. 
And when I got on the plane, it was hella people from Chicago, and they were like, yo, that's dope, man. And I, I thought they were just remarking on the fact that I met Jay. And then somebody had said to me, we went to the bathroom, like, yo, man, Jay got one of your pieces. That means everything now, da 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 And it was just a moment. And, and Did you realize that's the that's magnitude that's of that moment in the moment of what it could mean for your career, like someone like Jay having work? Not in that moment. I know what it meant to me, right? Because what he has, has laid out inspired me, you know, to even just do this, right? And, and also his trajectory of, like, being very non-traditional, right? And that's my trajectory in the art world in a lot of ways. So that inspired me. But it wasn't until, you know, days coming where I started to realize what this means for my career, right? For sure. And what's, like, the dream role for you? Honestly, I just want to work with my friends, man. Oh. You know? Kaluuya, who's been on the show, Idris. Um, there's so many people I admire, Letitia Wright. You know, I just want to work with people who are at the crib with me every day. Because I'd rather make a, a bad movie with people I love than a great movie with people I can't stand. Absolutely. You know, I just, I'm all about good vibes <laughs> these days. Like, even with social media, like, I think something's in the air, like, there's just, everyone's miserable. Yeah, man, like, shit different, man. You know, like, if, if someone that looks <laughs> like you... want to tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, can, you can take over. I'm going to be like, preach. You know what I'm saying? But can, like, can we talk right. about that a little bit, right? It's like, yeah. social media, we still care, it still you affects suck. us. It's... Everything you've done in your life does not matter. <laughs> and you kind of blew, her, you blew up on social media, obviously. I mean, that, your video went viral. Do you still care, like, you want that? You look at it and go, what are people saying about what I'm doing? Well, it's interesting because that was also how I made most of my living, right? Mm. It wasn't to the point where we had NIL. <laughs> it was like something I feel like I had to care about, right? Like I have to make sure I'm posting the right things. I have the right engagement, which is hard because what the f do people want to see online? I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. Because, game. Yeah, because you know what? It, the world is unpredictable. So I just sat there like, you know, I used to not care and then all of a sudden I was caring and then it was like, then my engagement started falling and now I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna post what makes me happy Facts. and what, whatever it is. But it is interesting when you get a negative comment, that weighs so much heavier than when you get a thousand positive comments. Right. So it's almost like, I like the influx of Comments, because you don't get wrapped up in it, because you're just like, mm. oh, honestly, I'm not even going to waste my time. And it's, and it's hard not to respond. You got to be sure. Yo, you gotta, it's, it's you gotta so make hard. it to business. <laughs> it's so hard. To I, not get wrapped up in it. You it's know what so I'm saying? hard not to you respond. You try not it's to respond. Hard. Yeah, it's absolutely. The hardest you got to make thing. it. Have you ever responded of a lunch? Uh, I haven't called, I haven't, like, destroyed someone's life. What like, there's said? times where I write out. Right. I'm like, yo, I just went on your page and send this one to post yo, it. First of all, you look hideous. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wrote all of it, right? And then I'm like, all right, I got half of it out. Let me delete it. You know? I don't need to put that energy out there. I'm gonna focus on the people who actually show me love. If a thousand people are showing you love and one person is saying something negative for clout, you can't respond to a thousand people. But hey, if you're feeling bad, just shout out. Yo, thank you to everyone who's loving me right now. For sure. Appreciate you guys. That's definitely you know? the right That way. one person who's giving you negativity is going to be like, damn, <laughs> I didn't get her. You know? Because that's what they want to do. They want to get you. Yeah, for sure. They want to they wanna go at your character. But it's interesting because you two are in the business, you two also, where you need people to like the thing that you... Meaning, meaning like, if, you, if you're an athlete, right, like... Like him, love him, hate him. Patrick still gonna get these ball in that battle. Still gonna get these three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Jason Tatum get thirty five points, he gonna get paid. I don't give a damn how we Facts. feel, you feel. Yeah. You guys are not the same way. You need people to watch the show. Mm. So to, you need people to like. You gotta the stay in there. Here's the thing. That's a different thing. They're mm -hmm. still That's gonna, gonna watch grace. it. Yeah. That's the thing. Even out of spite. That's the spite crazy watch. thing. They're still gonna watch it. And that's why I'm like, oh, we, oh, you're just, you're just bored. You just genuinely want to stand out. I'm quoting Jack Harlow here. So yeah, people want to say something negative, so they stand out because you're getting so much love. Like, that is script. If you, if you could go back, by the way, when you had that sparring match with cancel culture, culture at the mm. beginning, you had a certain vigor. Well, that was, to how that was you more than sparring. It was a heavyweight Oh, man, fight. I got knocked the Let's <laughs> <laughs> not be. But not, no, so know. my question is, and then I noticed you did kind of 
you chilled and faded away. Had to, bro. If you could go back now, would you do, the beginning of it, would you deal with it differently? Absolutely. Got Absolutely. It. That's something I came like out, out my own mouth and said, you know what I mean? Like, as of late, not even as of late, like, you know, like, did, I would have maybe handled it the way he had. I would apologize, but hey, I didn't mean to apologize. Like, I'm this type of person. Like, I'm going to fight to the tooth <laughs> and nail. Like, if I, you know what I mean? Yeah. About, like, my character and me and my intentions, um, that's something I'll never let. Like, I'm not gonna let you, you know what I mean, make me, I'm not a bad person like a at all. Like that, you get right? what I'm saying? Yeah, like, my character, that's something I can't, like, I'm unfaltering on that. Like, you know, like I say, like, you almost gotta make it your business to not let, like, to not let that, you know, get to you. Cause once it gets to you, it's almost like, you know, it, this, it's a nonstop game of figuring it out. That's what we have to do anyways, to market ourselves, to, you know what I mean, to make ourselves worth something. And, you know, if you look back on, like, I was the most, you know, at, and I hope this don't sound like I'm tooting my own horn. No, at the time, I'm facts. looking at it like this, but I was like the most marketable artist in the world. Like, when that happened, bro, I had my own meal with Burger King. Like, I, like a lot of the things, like, I see, like, my peers, like, doing now, which I love to see it. Like, I, I love to see, like, these are, like, things that, like, I was blessed and fortunate enough to be able to, like, accomplish, like, my first year as a mainstream. Like, I had a meal at Burger King and I shot the commercial. I still got the behind the scenes. Like I, I had so much going on, bro. Like, like you have no idea. Like I had so much going on, you know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, at the end of the day, like if you become wrapped up in the negative, we're so conditioned to rolling with the punches with social media or what, whatever it is, whatever room we come into, okay, we know we got to adapt. Whatever space that we're in, we know we got to adapt. Whatever business it is, whatever game we're playing, we got to adapt. You know, and that's who's going to excel. Like, that's just how the world is. The you know people what I mean? don't adapt, though, and that's the no. problem. No, they don't. Like I, was, I was having a conversation with someone who's going through it online right now. Right, right? now. Right now. I'm definitely not going to tell you. <laughs> and, and we well, were talking. By the way, they're going through it online. It's kind of public. Well, there we go. <laughs> but, I, but, but we were talking about the, the concept of repercussions, right? And the people get no repercussions for what they do online. You know, they could still go to their job, they could still go home to their families, nothing happens. If I say one- One thing, bro. One thing. Be careful. My career, my life hey. is over. Be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Be careful now. You know, and it's, I've, I've sat down in rooms of people who were doing great things, and I've said publicly to them, I'm like, hey, yo, should, should all of us just come offline and disappear? What's gonna happen to the internet if that happens? What are these people going to talk about I'd if love I'm to see it. gone? If all of us are gone, no Instagram, no nothing. Only time you see me is in this chair, or if a pap caught me. What's going to happen then? You know, our our existence is some people's livelihood. I saw a quote you had that you said uh, you never had as many fights as you've had as a rapper in your entire life pre being a rapper. No, like for like, sure. <laughs> Like for sure, like people think like I because love, like, bro, you love to fight. Like, no, I don't. Like you got portrayed no, as a fighter, like a guy. I don't want to get hit. I don't want to hit you. I don't want to hurt my damn hand. Like no, I do not. Like I do not like to fight. Like cut it. You need the box, bro. You need to know the. I don't. Like, who's you gonna should, go run a mile you every train. morning? Five, run five miles every morning. No, bro. Like no, I go out there get hit the right way. Going to bed, like, no, nah, I'm good. I do not like the fella. Absolutely, though, man. And, you know, like I say, like, the amount of, like, real life that I was going through at the same time, like, so going back to, like, when Suge dropped her, uh, the, that entire project, Baby on Baby, like, I got a random call in the morning, maybe, like, two weeks, like, a week after it drops. As soon as it goes, the number one on the Apple Music charts and this chart and that chart, which is, that's a Grammy coming from what I come from. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is like, damn, you know what I mean? I get a random phone call from my little brother. My, my father gets found, he got found dead. He died in his sleep, you know what I'm saying? From a heart condition, you know what I'm saying? And um, my oldest brother, my mom, she got three sons. I'm the baby, literally, you know what I mean? I got two older brothers that I was raised with. Single mother, my oldest brother, he commits suicide. Damn. So this is every year. This is every year, you know what I mean? Every every success, every successful year yeah. of my life. You have an oldest I've success. been working yeah. towards it. For years, you know what I mean? The second that it gets there, boom, okay. I'm hit with this, you know what I mean, with my pops. Boom, I'm my brother. This is, these are my, these are the, the only, I lost damn near every man I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally became the one, like, right there. Like, you know what I mean? In real time. And, and this is why I'm still having the, 
you know, I'm not an artist who my fans didn't buy into me for pain or for this. I made people feel good. You yeah, know you what I mean? Like, that was my niche. Was gonna you, so how Energy. Is it, so how is this going to affect your music going you, forward? You saw it. You literally, if you if you think back, if you think back how my music was, and this is, you know, and this this will be interesting when people see this because it'll, it'll put it into perspective. I'm not one to, that part of my heart, I don't wear it on my sleeve because it's too personal to me. You know what I mean? I understand it. I understand, yeah. you know, what comes with this business. And I don't expect for anybody, I don't feel entitled for anybody to treat it as, you know, personal to them as it is to me. Their pain. Yeah, yeah this is my it. pain. It don't got nothing to do with me. Are you better today? Absolutely. Because bro, of what bro. you went through? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, that's, it was ways. a blessing. And, you know, a lot of, that's cliche for me to call, you know what I'm saying? Like, something I've been through, a blessing in disguise. Like, that was nothing short of a blessing. But that's the goal, you know? Like, we stand on the shoulders of giants. You know, and they say, you know, there's no superstars today. It's because the people keep trying to sh shoot us down when we're on the rise. Just let us get there, you know? And we will never reach those places if the people don't start clapping. You cannot do this alone. No, it for sure, you need rooms like this, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Do you do that in the art world, by the way? Do other black artists do that? You know, it's, it's crazy, man, because artists are insular people. Of course. And you know, it's very rare you find those that are genuine enough to have those and experiences. And it's more doggy dog. It is, a little you know bit, I mean? right? Business it's like I've met, I've met artists that I look up to, and it's very rare will they'll accept me, right? And especially, like, if they see, you know, it, my stars rising. It, it, it was fine when I was the little, little guy. Oh, hey, you know, hey, how you Stand, doing? Come yep. on, yeah, it's okay, yeah, I'll you, give you a little bit. But now, it, the conversation changes, and, like, the reach out, because I'll still reach out. You know, I, hey, I'm in LA or I'm in New York, I'm such and such, and there's no response or the response comes later, I'm already back on the plane. It's that type of vibe. So it's, it's weird in that space. I mean, I do have a few artists that are sort of my elders in that way that will pick up the phone if I need to or, you know, have that conversation, but it's very, very rare. I feel the same way. Really? Kind of. Well, because gymnastics is so individualized, it's like, and I think we're all so competitive with Business each other. Yeah. yeah. Even I, if you're on the same team. And you don't collaborate. Exactly. Like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like, you know, like even, like, you know, other actors, actors actually, they love you. Of course. That with me, you know, other music, like, they have opportunity. There's opportunity somewhere along the lines of them giving you their support or this or that. So that's a factor to play. But I mean, I know for, you know, like other, you know what I mean? Like other professions, it gotta be. There can only be one dog. person at the top. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sure. As we always say, it starts with us. These, that's why these rooms are important. Let's continue to uplift each other, support no, each other. Sure. Baby, it's good to have you back, brother. No, I appreciate you. Yeah, you. I appreciate you. Have you have back in a healthy sure. space? No, absolutely. I can hear the growth in his voice. I don't even know. No, for sure. I went to school for film. I wanted to be like the taller, handsome Spike Lee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, that's right. <laughs> I, listen, I, I love Spike, but I went, I went to, I went to Clark. I love Spike too. You definitely look better. I, I, <laughs> thank you, brother. For sure.